Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India's ruling BJP sweeps Gujarat elections, concedes defeat in Himachal Pradesh. US denounces despicable public execution, warns of action if terrorists regroup in Afghanistan. And Nepal's top court rejects letter calling Chief Justice impeachment invalid. And now for all the details, celebrations broke out as Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party won the biggest majority by any party ever at elections in his home state of Gujarat on Thursday. The party, however, conceded defeat in elections in Himachal Pradesh state as the main opposition Congress was on course of winning a majority. Celebrations broke out as Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bhatia Janta Party swept the election in his home state of Gujarat on Thursday with the biggest majority by any party ever in polls in the state. The BJP has never lost in state assembly elections in Gujarat since 1995. Modi was Gujarat's chief minister for 13 years before becoming prime minister in 2014. He remains widely popular despite criticism over rising inflation and unemployment. The Prime Minister took to Twitter and said people have blessed politics of development as he congratulated BJP workers over the win. Till 6pm, BJP had bagged 140 seats and was leading on 16 seats in the 182-member Gujarat Assembly, while Opposition Congress had secured 15 seats and led on two. The result is said to give BJP a big boost ahead of general elections in 2024. At the last state election in 2017, the party won 99 seats. ये एक बार फिर साबित हो गया है कि गुजरात के लोग अपने प्रिय नेता श्री नरेंद्र भाई पर अपार विश्वास प्रेम और आशीर्वाद की वर्षा करते हैं गुजरात की जनता के इस जनादेश को हम विनम्रता पूर्वक स्वीकार करते हैं the BJP, however, conceded defeat in elections in Himachal Pradesh as the Congress party was on course of winning a majority with at least 39 out of a total 68 seats. BJP was hoping to ride on Modi's aggressive campaigning to retain power in Himachal Pradesh but had only bagged 18 seats and was leading on 7 seats until 5.45 p.m. It will leave the party and its allies in control of 15 states and one federal territory in India. And the fact-finding team probing the murder of prominent Pakistani journalist Arshad Sharif has concluded that his killing was a case of planned and targeted assassination. In a report, the investigators have said it was not a case of mistaken identity, as the Kenyan police earlier claimed. The killing of Arshad Sharif, a prominent Pakistani investigative journalist in Kenya, was a planned and targeted assassination, a report by fact-finding team of Pakistan's Intelligence Bureau and Federal Investigation Agency revealed on Wednesday. Arshad Sharif, who was critical of Pakistan's powerful army, was killed when police shot at his car near Nairobi in late October. The Kenyan police later expressed regret over the incident saying it had been a case of mistaken identity during a search for a similar car involved in a child abduction case. The report states it was not a case of mistaken identity as the Kenyan police claimed. It, however, refrains from blaming anyone specifically, saying only that individuals in Kenya, Dubai or Pakistan may have had a role in the slaying. Meanwhile, the Islamabad police have charged two Pakistani businessmen living in Kenya who had hosted Sharif with involvement in his killing. Sharif's killing led to condemnations and calls for an independent probe after which Pakistan PM Shehbaz Sharif announced an investigation. The 49-year-old journalist was living in exile after he fled the country in August to avoid arrest in the wake of multiple cases, including sedition charges slapped against him for making comments on his show deemed offensive to the military. 
Moving on, the United States has criticized the Taliban after reports have emerged on public floggings and execution of the Afghan population by the radical Islamist group. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price also said that Washington will take action if international terrorists regrouped in Afghanistan. The United States has slammed the Taliban after reports emerged on public floggings and execution of the Afghan population by the radical Islamic group. Speaking during a press briefing on Wednesday, U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said that this indicates to everyone that the Taliban seek to return to their regressive and abusive practices of the 1990s. He also said that the U.S. will take action if the international terrorists regrouped in Afghanistan. We've seen the reports that the Taliban has ordered judges to uh, impose their interpretation of Sharia law. Uh, that includes public executions, it includes amputations, it includes floggings. Uh, we've seen the reports of uh, a public execution today. We've seen despicable videos that have circulated online in recent days uh, regarding some of these tactics. This indicates to us that the Taliban uh, seek to seek a return to their regressive and abusive practices of the 1990s. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid confirmed on Wednesday that a man was put to death who was accused of murder in 2017 in Farah province, the first officially confirmed public execution since the Taliban seized power last August. Mujahid said that the execution was carried out by the father of the victim who shot the man three times. The UN condemned the incident and called on de facto authorities to establish immediate moratorium with a view to abolishing the death penalty. Since taking over, the Taliban has imposed policies severely restricting basic rights, particularly those of women and girls. It has also limited critical reporting and detained and beaten journalists. In news from Bangladesh, clashes broke out between police and the Bangladesh Nationalist Party activist on Wednesday after a heated argument as the police tried to disperse them from outside party's central office. One person died and several others were reportedly injured in the clash. This comes ahead of an anti-government rally on 10th of December. Clashes broke out between police and activists of main opposition BNP. Bangladesh Nationalist Party on Wednesday as they had gathered in front of the party's central office in capital Dhaka and the police officers tried to disperse them leading to a heated argument. The argument turned violent when police started beating the activist with BNP workers pelting stone in return, reports suggest. One person died while several others were reportedly injured in the clash. As per the police statement to a local news agency, they had also detained over 300 BNP activists. Fifteen unexploded cocktails were also seized from BNP headquarters, police said. I was in the same place, but I was in the same place. I was in the same place. झापिए पड़े एवं मुँह मुँह गोली छोड़े एवं आम्रा पोतियों तो करार प्रथम चिष्टा करी किंतु आम्रा पानी नहीं कारण तादेव हाथे अस्त्र चिलो शे अस्त्र नहीं आम्रा देर ओने भाई देर गोलियों करे छे एवं टीयर्स ने तार पर कॉकटेल गोली शॉबी तारा The clash comes ahead of an anti-government rally on December 10, which is expected to be attended by BNP Party Supremo Khalid Azia. BNP has announced to hold protests across Bangladesh and demanded immediate release of party workers. BNP has been demanding resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and formation of a caretaker government until the next election. A Nepal Supreme Court has sought a response from Parliament General Secretariat over a letter issued by the department annulling the impeachment of Chief Justice Cholendra Shamsher Rana. The suspended Chief Justice has maintained he will not resign and is ready to face proceedings in the Parliament as per the constitutional process. Nepal's Supreme Court on Wednesday evening sought clarification from the Federal Parliament's General Secretary Bharat Raj Gautam over his letter terming impeachment against Chief Justice Cholendra Shamsher Rana inactive. The hearing is scheduled to take place on Friday. The development comes after senior lawyers submitted a writ petition in the Supreme Court urging it not to implement the Parliament Secretariat's verdict as the issue is still under the Parliament's consideration. The writ has argued 
Parliament Secretariat's letter is illegal and deserves cancellation. In the controversial letter, Parliament Secretary Gautam has argued since election of new House of Representatives has taken place, the impeachment becomes invalid. Chief Justice Rana, who continues to stay under tight security at his government residence, had to undergo impeachment process after 98 MPs registered a general indictment against him, saying that he had failed to check corruption and was against the ruling coalition. In March, the impeachment was tabled in the parliament and an 11-member recommendation committee was formed. The committee has submitted their commendation to impeach the suspended Chief Justice. The failure to table the recommendation in the House has left the impeachment motion hanging. Rana, who is due to retire on December 13, has maintained he will not resign and that he is ready to face impeachment by the Parliament, which is the constitutional process to remove the Chief Justice. Moving on, Tibetans in exile in India on Wednesday staged a demonstration to express solidarity with Tibetans and the Chinese people who had to face crackdown in China as part of its zero COVID policy. Beijing has now finally announced easing of restrictions, but the move has led to fears of virus spread. Exiled Tibetans in India's northern hill town of Dhamshala staged a demonstration on Wednesday to criticize China for introducing a zero COVID policy, which had fueled widespread protest over the world's toughest curbs. Tibetan activists gathered to express their solidarity with the Tibetans and the Chinese people who had been under strict COVID 19 quarantine protocols. Protesters demonstrated with blank paper, symbolizing the absence of freedom of speech, and raised slogans to condemn the Chinese rule, as they believed they were misusing COVID protocols to crush their cultural identity in China. So there's this huge mistrust against the government, their own government as well, in the name of uh, protecting their and uh, safeguarding their healthcare issue and all this stuff, and in the name of zero COVID policy, they are repressing and uh, torturing number of. Han Chinese themselves and other uh, community people who are under Chinese illegal occupation. For nearly three years, China has managed COVID as a disease on par with bubonic plague and cholera and as cases spread earlier this year, whole communities were locked down, sometimes for months. However, China on Wednesday announced the most sweeping changes to its resolute anti-COVID regime, loosening rules that curb the spread of the virus but sparked protest and hobbled the world's second largest economy. A first of its kind automated teller machine which dispenses gold coins has been launched in India's southern Hyderabad city. People can withdraw gold coins up to 5 kgs by both debit and credit cards to complete their transactions. Have a look. India launched its first real-time ATM that dispenses gold coins, which is also the first of its kind globally in southern Hyderabad city. The gold ATM, which opened its doors to the public on December 3, allows customers to purchase coins with a choice of eight combinations, weighing from 0.5 grams to 100 grams. It can store up to 5 kgs of gold. An official of Gold Sikka, the gold ATM company, informed that these coins are 24 karat gold and customers will get their investment return as per the live price. This is the first time uh, a technology is used in an ATM ke through up gold. Ho. It's a unique experience that too if it's a new and you are the first one or you are the one among the first. So the jo experience hota hai, zaru, I mean, you can't express in the words. The ATM, which was built in collaboration with the Hyderabad-based startup OpenCube Technologies Private Limited, will provide customers 24 by 7 service. Users can opt for both debit and credit cards to complete their transactions. Experience is good. The entire transaction took less than a minute. So one whoever goes for investment, I think this is the best way to take gold. And it is really nice. India is the world's second biggest gold consumer. Two-thirds of India's gold demand usually comes from rural areas where jewellery is a traditional store of wealth. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.